This is Texans TV. We're in Indianapolis for the 2022 NFL Scouting Combine, the GM, the head coach, and so much more next on Texans 360. In his rock and roll. You already know what time it is, man. Touchdown, Texans! I got fleets for all y'all. Ah! He's in rock and roll! Guess when you think you've seen it all, there's always something else. Let's go, let's go home, let's go home. Hello there and welcome to Texans 360. Drew Doherty with the voice of the Houston Texans, Mark Vandermeer. And we're not in our usual spot. We're here in Indianapolis at the Combine. It's that usual time of year and it's great to be here, Mark. It's so good to be here. We were not here last year. They did not have one because of COVID, of course. But here we are in Indianapolis. Last year here, maybe. That's a subject for another day, but what a great opportunity to connect with the coach and the general manager and all these prospects. Yeah, you're going to see some of that. You're going to see some more interviews that uh, Mark and John Harris had throughout. Plus, we get a national media perspective on things, but we start the show like we always do with some news of the week. There's been a signing or two. Tay Davis, a linebacker, and the old man John Weeks, long snapper, and he's a young man. He's, he's much younger than both of us. But the long snapper and longest tenured Texan is coming back for 2022. That's a good thing. We heard from Nick Casario saying this guy improved in 2021, which, hey, that's saying something. But it's great to have Weeks back in the fold. Well, he's such a hard worker. And any team, you're only as strong as your weakest link, right? What Weeks does is incredibly important. You can have a beautiful chandelier, but if the chain holding it up is weak and it breaks, voila. John Weeks has been outstanding for this team since he came on to Texans campus in 2010, and it's great to have him around for 2022. Amen. He's played in every single game since 2010 and every single postseason game in team history. All right, let's talk about the combine and let's talk about Nick Casario. It's his first combine to attend because, they, like we said, we didn't have one last year. So he's got a lot to do, and he talked about adding talent to the roster. You got to add depth, you got to add talent but he's in a better spot than he was this time a year ago. Well, for only the second time in the last five years, the Texans have a first and second round draft choice. And Casario, who had five picks to work with last year, but only started in the third round, now he's got a first and a second. And who knows what happens by the time you get to draft weekend, Drew, with trades and such. So a lot of opportunity here. So many athletes to take a look at. They're able to have a lot of interviews with these guys. They're fast and furious, but at least you get an up close and personal look at the players working out on the field. You get to talk to them, get a sense of them, and then you can invite some more back onto your place to really get an extra look. Yeah, you bring up those five he drafted last year. They nailed it, he and the personnel staff, as far as getting play out of those guys. And for more from Nick Casario, here's Mark, here's John, and the GM. At the NFL Scouting Combine, Mark Vandermeer and John Harris with you, joined by Texans General Manager Nick Casario. Nick, welcome. And how is this combine different for you? Because we didn't have one last year, and this is your first as a general manager. Yeah, I'd say the process is pretty similar. Um, it's really an opportunity to kind of gather information, um, you know, meet with the players kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis, kind of on a personal level. I'd say the biggest thing are the, uh, the underclassmen um, discussions because it's really this first opportunity you have to kind of talk face-to-face -face with them. So, um, you know, old habits die hard. So as soon as you show up here, you kind of are back in the swing of things. So it's been good. Nick, we've kind of bandied this question about to many people. If the combine moves from Indianapolis, what's lost? I mean, do you like having it in Indianapolis? Or, I mean, if it, if it does move, what's lost by doing so? Yeah, I think the the consistency that we're all accustomed to in the city of Indianapolis, I mean, Indianapolis is a great host. You have a lot of research, and the way it's set up between the convention center, between the dome, the access to the medical facilities and the hotel locations. Yep. I mean, everything is sort of centrally located and logistically, it's very easy to kind of move around. Um, I think Jeff Foster has done a phenomenal job here through the years. I have a lot of respect for what he's done and kind of developing and evolving. Um, in the end, whatever the decision is made, you know, then we'll adjust accordingly. I think all of us kind of learn to adjust, but I would say personally, um, you know, would love to see it continue in Indianapolis because I think there's a lot of benefit um, to being here. Nick, we take all the workout stuff with a grain of salt. That's something we've been talk taking about. Look, he ran a 40. It's great. Fantastic. Any drill that you look at and go, this one's important. 
I don't know. The poor is maybe not the right word, but is there anyone that you look at a little bit closer than any of the others? That's a really good question. I think certain drills are more applicable than others, and I think they even the combine has kind of changed some of the drills yep. specific to different groups. The one drill which you can see kind of on both sides of the ball, so it's the skilled players offensively and the skilled players defensively, is the gauntlet drill because yeah, yeah. they're running full speed. Yes. Their ability to catch the ball, adjust to the ball, can they keep stride, their hand-eye coordination, that's a really good drill. So the catch and tuck component, catch it, put it away, turning it up the field, do they have to slow down? Because you can kind of gauge their comfort level. Yep. You can improve catching the football. What's harder to, I would say, correct or improve for a defensive back is maybe his ability to turn and find the ball yeah. down the field. But that the gauntlet drill is a really good drill yeah. because it simulates – catching and running through traffic at a high speed, which is going to happen on a field on Sunday. And those passes have to be thrown very crisply and on time, right? They do. I actually threw some of those passes <laughs> back in the day, so it's been a long time. But Lovey Smith will meet with the media Wednesday. So tell us about your relationship with Lovey so far as you guys have been working on this offseason, getting the Texans better for 2022. Yeah, Lovey's very open-minded. He has a, a philosophy and a, a certain way that he wants to do things. Like he spent a lot of time on the schedule, kind of planning out the spring and even kind of going into training camp. So everybody kind of has an understanding of kind of the things that we want to do. So spend a lot of time on that. And then we've spent time talking about our players and I've, I'll always update him on some situations, different situations. Hey, we're having a discussion with this player, you know, and just trying to prioritize the players that, you know, we want to bring back or are trying to bring back and just make sure like we're bringing the player back because there's mutual interest. It's not well, I want to bring a player back and, you know, we're not sure where we are from the staff standpoint because that's going to be counterproductive. But I would say he's very open-minded. Um, he's definitely flexible. Um, he's got a great way about him. Um, so the communication has, has been has been really good at this point. So excited to be able to work with him and the staff that we have in place. And hopefully we can just make some progress and start building the team out here as we go over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so there's lots of options with the Texans having that third overall pick. But you got to put the asterisk out there because the day after the season ended, Casario said, hey, we might move on from that third overall pick, meaning they might trade back. Well, a lot of teams are said to want to trade back, and you just don't know how that's going to work out because usually teams want to trade up to get a quarterback, right? And this year's quarterback class so far doesn't look like you're going to jam three guys into the top five exactly, so we'll see how that plays out. Plus, the teams picking early seem to be okay at quarterback when you look at the Jags, who picked first, and obviously they have Trevor Lawrence, Detroit Lions with Jared Goff. The Texans have made it clear Davis Mills looks pretty good heading into year two of his yeah. career, so let's see what happens. So the trade back situation might be more uh, difficult than you think. I like what they have available, though, Drew. Because oh, at three overall, yeah. you are going to, if you stay there, you're, you're going to get, get a, a difference maker. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're going to get a great player. Now, it could be an offensive lineman. It might not be a marquee busting situation like, oh, offensive lineman. Does that get the fan base excited? But it's monumentally important for your success offensively. So it might turn out to be somebody like that. Let's see how it plays out. And again, maybe you have more than one first round pick when it's all said and done. No doubt, and you bring up that third overall pick, the offensive line, there's certainly some great guys who might be available there. But then you've got the Notre Dame safety, Kyle Hamilton, and you've got two pass rushers in Aiden Hutchinson from Michigan and Kayvon Thibodeau out of Oregon. One of those three is likely going to be available, and any one of those three guys would come in and make your team a lot better. I think the biggest upset of this draft, other than one of the top two picking a quarterback, would be Aiden Hutchinson not going to Detroit at number yeah. two, played in Michigan. Dan Campbell's the head coach. He's going to fall in love with this guy and just say, this is our player no matter what. So there you are with the Texans, maybe O-line, maybe Hamilton is available right there, and that would be really intriguing. Hey, you and I have been coming to this for at least a decade now, and some of the coaches like Lovey Smith, they've been here since 96, and you even had a good conversation with Dave McGinnis, who's working for the Titans now. He's done it since the 80s, but just in the time you and I have done this, this has changed drastically, this whole event and whole week. Well, we used to do this kind of stuff at Lucas Oil Stadium. Now we're in the convention center, which is attached to the stadium. Everything's connected here in Indianapolis. You can walk around for miles without ever actually going outside. So that's interesting. Lovey Smith's job interview with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the mid 90s was here in Indy at the Combine at the RCA Dome with Monty Kiffin, the then defensive coordinator for Tampa Bay. So a lot of Texans history here. <laughs> and you know, when we came, it was you, me, and one other person 
Now, we've got a whole staff, there's eight or nine of us at this thing. Yeah, because there's so much content to yeah. get, not only the GM and the coach, but all the other media members, whoever else we can get our hands on here interviewing, and just great content from soaking up this massive event with hundreds of college players eligible to be drafted. And look, a lot of these guys, even if you don't draft them, they'll be free agents someday. Maybe you can get them then. So you might have interviewed a guy at the Combine who four or five years later is available as a free agent. At least you've met him before. And again, have a sense of the person. You could see how they developed as an NFL player before you make that decision to sign him. And Mark just said the key word, interview. That and the medical exams, the most important part of coming to the NFL Combine for these prospects. Yeah, the 40's great, the bench press is important not as important as those two things. All right, stick with us, because after the break, we've got more Texans 360, and we're going to hear from the head coach himself, Lovey Smith. The engine of every defense is a defensive line. Um, there's a certain look we would like it to have, uh, a certain guy we would like to coach it. We have a profile for every position up front. This past year, of course, me being a defensive coordinator, we got a jump start on on letting the guys see exactly how we're going to play defense. We had a few players that uh, had pretty good years based on the first time out. A lot, some potential. Um, you know, normally that improvement from anything, you know, game one to game two, uh, first year to second year, can't wait to get started on that. We're back. Texans 360 from the Combine, Drew and Mark and Lovey Smith. He's been down this path before. He's comfortable here, and it's a real reassuring thing to see, isn't it? There's no doubt. I mean, he has recruited some of these players here at the Combine as a college coach at Illinois. Some of his players are here at the Combine, so it's great to get his perspective as a college coach and, of course, a longtime NFL head coach right here in Indy. And you got his perspective and a whole lot more, along with John Harris here on Texans Radio. Joining us now at the NFL Scouting Combine, it's head coach Lovey Smith. Coach, great to have you with us. And Thanks, ML. How's it been so far, and, and what are you looking to accomplish here? What are some of the more important things that you need to get done this week? Well, uh, it kind of starts the process, you know, kind of the official kickoff to uh, really uh, looking to change your roster and see what your roster would look like for the, for the upcoming year. First time we get a chance to meet, you know, college prospects, see them work out, get medical information on them. It's a lot of information and a lot of time we'll be spending together in upcoming weeks, but this starts the process. Coach, how much of a stress is off your shoulders once you get your coaching staff in place? I've made a statement. It's, the, it's one of the hardest things you have to do as a, as a head football coach is first off putting the staff together and then keeping your football staff together. So for us to be able to get that done as soon as we were able to, of course, we had a head start. Um, to be, first, to be able to get the coordinators in place, you know, Pep Hamilton, of course, Frank Ross, and some of our, you know, our coaches that will be at you know, in prominent positions. Mm -hmm. So to be able to get together, and then it's just not them. It's all of the staff. It just kind of fell into place. And uh, really love, I know every head football coach is going to talk about how he loves his staff. Right. Um, and I do. I mm -hmm. just like the group we were able to put together. It seemed like we almost, we're speaking a, a, you know, a, a similar language early in the process. Well, it's interesting because every team wants to be good in the trenches, and the guys you have coaching those position groups, Jacques Césaire, George Warhop, this has been really interesting for us to meet those guys because we felt like running through a brick wall after we <laughs> had our media Both sessions them. with them. Yeah. Well, they, uh, first off, George Warhop. You know, George was my offensive line coach in Tampa, so I had had an opportunity to interview him before, get to know him, see him, not just wonder what he's like, see him in every situation. So that was a get right away for him. His experience that he's going to bring to the offensive line room is pretty special. And the same thing with Jock. I didn't know him, but I knew his background, his family, where he'd been from. Uh, you know, he was assistant defensive line coach for the Buffalo Bills. Eric Washington, the defensive line coach there, was on my staff in Chicago. Mm. Eric worked for Rod Marinelli, one of my best friends in life, and of course, a defensive line guru. It just all made sense. And when I talked with Jock, with Jock right away, you know, you kind of know, know early on that, yeah, this is going to be good. This, this is a good fit. And he's hit the pavement running. And I'm going to say that for our, our entire staff. We didn't bring all of our staff up here. And 
that decision, you know, uh, you can get an awful lot here, but when you're a new staff, there's a lot of work to be done. And uh, the guy, those guys are back there working their butts off. What was the main thing you were looking for from a I, group of assistants to join you? Well, stern teachers, guys that have an expertise, but also know how to communicate that to the, to the players. And the systems that we put in place where players will, won't feel like that it brings out the best in them. We feel like we're a player we have player-friendly systems with all three phases. Coach, thanks a lot for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me on, man. We all have wants, but what do we need? The Texans needs coming up next on Texans 360. I'd say generally speaking, uh, we saw some progress from the rookies, not just Davis, but I'd say Nico um, kind of as the year progressed. Garrett Wall had an opportunity to play a little bit later in the year. The one guy that played the most snaps or was the most consistent from beginning then was Roy Lopez, you know, when he was picked in the sixth round or something like that, whatever it was. So I think the big thing, you're just looking for some level of improvement and progress from year one to year two. Uh, we've had about, I don't know, 25, 30 players that have been in NRG over the last, you know, two to three weeks. So they're hungry, you know, they're excited for the off season. So they're kind of starting their training regimen. So they're kind of turning the page to, to next season. Indianapolis is the spot. This is Texans 360 with Mark Vandermeer and me, Drew Doherty. And I get asked, you get asked, uh, where is the Texans' biggest need in the draft? And we always can just say, yes, because you can go any direction, can't you? Defensively, what's a good spot to start? Well, let's just start. You said defensively, Drew, but I think the most important thing to point out is that if they feel pretty comfortable about Mills as a quarterback starting year two, 2022 guy, well, that takes a lot of the heat off having to draft that particular position early because now you can focus on your other needs and defensively you're looking at getting pressure on the quarterback you're always going to look to improve the, the defensive line they had some good performances there last year but they're going to look to shore up in that front and the linebacking crew factors in as well they don't blitz a ton but they do blitz from time to time i think that front seven is a key place to look but it doesn't stop there yeah lovey smith said the defensive line is the engine of his defense while the linebacking core the brain trust and like you mentioned going to be some faces sticking around going to be some new ones as well but if you stay in the draft you can't go wrong it, with an Aiden Hutchinson, Aiden Hutchinson, with a cave on Thibodeau. Those are the kind of bell cows of this front seven, in, you know, in 2022. Yeah, well, you'd be looking at one of those guys as the number three overall pick in this draft. If you stay there, like you stay there. or if you traded down and it wasn't outside the top 10, maybe a Thibodeau falls. I doubt a Hutchinson does. But again, there are going to be so many players in this draft to look at. You don't always have to get that guy with your first round draft choice. Sometimes later on down the line. Last year, and Nick pointed this out, Roy Lopez wasn't exactly a lottery pick equivalent in the NFL, but he contributed greatly on your D-line. You need finds like that in this draft, in any draft really, to build a successful NFL team. All the champs in this league are loaded with those types of players. Yeah, and speaking of Roy Lopez, he wasn't even here last year, did not attend the combine. He was a steal for the Texans there late in the draft. So let's say the Texans roll with Davis Mills as the starter. You know, they don't hand out starting jobs in February, Lovey Smith said, but offensively, you can go a lot of different spots if, if he's the guy. Running back is a key spot here, and both Nick Casario and Lovey Smith pointed that out. This position group needs to be improved. Yeah, you do have some help coming back, but you need to make plays out of the backfield. And we need to hear what the national media thinks of the Houston Texans and their draft plans. It's coming up next on Texans 360. Welcome back to Texans 360 with Mark Vandermeer. I'm Drew Doherty. There are many staples of our experience at the Combine. We always have a nice steak dinner one night as a department. We always get some great interviews with our GM, with our head coach, and we always get DP Sidhu's national media take on the Texans. That's fun, isn't it? I can't wait to see this, or can I? All right, joining us here at the NFL Combine, Chris Sims. We're asking him about the Texans, so let's just start off right out the gate. Yeah. Number three overall pick, what do you think the Texans do with it? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, I'm not like, so I'm like beginner stage in my draft evaluation right now. But I would look at it right there to think number three, I mean, you're going to have the pick of the litter. I mean, you're just going to be able to do whatever you want. It's one of those situations where you just kind of let it play out. When we think about the top of the board, it's either going to be a pass rusher at one or an offensive tackle. It won't be a quarterback. I'm going to guess protect your quarterback, Davis Mills, some way. 
um, regardless of whether it's a tackle, a guard, whomever, likely a tackle there, uh, just you got to protect your quarterback. If you had to describe Lovey in one word, what would it be? Authentic. You know, I think everybody that's around Lovey that's ever been around him says the same thing. Like, he's just very comfortable in his own skin. Um, he's he's just very real. And I think that's a great quality to have. You talk about leadership. It's hard to be a leader if you're not comfortable in your own skin. You're not authentic. Solid. I would say he's solid because he's a great teacher and he understands how to get the best out of his personnel. Pep Hamilton, he's had experience with a number of quarterbacks throughout this league. He's now going to be the offensive coordinator. What do you expect for this offense with Pep handling the reins? Continued development of the quarterback. That is what Pep is great at. That is what certainly they would like to see for year number two. Pep has got like such like great knowledge of a lot of different systems. I think that, that to me, I love that aspect of an offensive coordinator. You know, to, to me, the ones that struggle are the ones that have pigeon, pigeonholed themselves into, this is what I do, this is what I was taught 20 years ago, and I've had nobody tell me anything else ever since then. And that just doesn't work in the NFL. Pep's been around a lot of different ideas, so I think he's got a lot of versatility. All right, what about Nick Casario? He's got one year under his belt as general manager. It was a tough situation that he walked into, but what have you thought about the, the year that he's had so far? What stood out last year is how many swings he took, and I mean that in the best way, like the way they reformed the roster in the offseason. I'm a huge Nick Casario fan, and that's where I think you know him paired with Lovey and Pep and everything, they'll have a vision and be able to find the right formula that works for their team this year. I think what they were able to do in terms of a assembling a collection of guys that play hard, that's hard to do in the National Football League. And one of the underrated things is understanding that playing hard is a talent. And so now if you can add talented players that play hard, then your team has a chance to really play uh, well. And so year two, he now has a better understanding of the personnel with the Texans. I think he should give them an opportunity to kind of build a very, very solid team that gets better and better each and every year. All right, Bucky, thanks so much. Appreciate the time. Thanks for having me. Fun stuff from DP, and you know, that's just the tip of the iceberg of all the stuff that we've gathered content-wise here on, you know, the HoustonTexans.com website, right. the Texans mobile app, the shows, your radio shows. It's, it's going to be fun. Lovey Smith shooting a free throw, cold, swish, nice. Yes, you've been nice. Thank you for coming on. We Thank really you, do bro. appreciate it. Appreciate the Tylers, Tyler Sudarth, Tyler Marcott for making this all happen, as well as Huffy, Jared Huff. Those guys do a fantastic job, and we couldn't do it without them, so thank you for checking out Texans 360. We'll be back same time, same place next week. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.